What's up guys, I'm just over here. Um sorry I haven't made any videos lately, I've been a bit busy and um well I'm gonna make a start again now. Hopefully I'm gonna have a three more done something a bit different as well because recently I got myself an Elgato um HD capture thingy and so basically now that will let me record PS4 once the um, major update comes which allows the copyright to be removed from that so I'll be able to do some metal gear and that sort of stuff. That which should be a bit good, and um, also I can start doing Wii U stuff as well. And that's what this video is going to be about. Basically, I'm just um, testing a few games out, see how they record that sort of stuff, and um, see what you think of them. If it's the kind of thing I was, might try with doing a bit of, you have to let me know what sort of stuff you think you want to see more of, and I'll see if I can do some of that. Um, yeah, let's have a look at some of the games, shall we? Right, first up we've got um, Lego City Undercover. This is a free Roman GTA style game. Well, obviously it's not going to be violence with GTA because it's Lego, but um, yeah, you can see it's kind of open world areas as well, but you can also start missions and um, like a more traditional Lego game. And The um, thing I like about this game is that it takes comedy elements from different stuff and then um, plays on that but it's not restricted to certain games like the movie times or whatever obviously you have to make reference to just that particular franchise but here though because there's no actual franchise story and kind of reference all sorts of different things and yeah that's, that's quite funny I haven't really got that far into it unfortunately but um, it's something I definitely want to be doing and then um, actually it's the same with most of these Wii U games I haven't really played as much as I, I'd, I'd like to um yeah I'll, you can see it's quite a, it's quite a good looking game really and um yeah I'll come up here now there'll, there'll be another kind of mission I'll switch from here to the next mission part and we'll see what the actual story missions are like as well. to Albatross Prison. Keep hold of your wallet. We might capsize. Basically I've um, traveled to this island which is a prison and uh, I need to get in contact with one of the inmates there. But first of all I have to find a way into the prison. And um, there's a sort of little bit of puzzle solving going on and that sort of stuff. Which is quite cool. That's it's quite well signed, Mark, but at the same time, it's not entirely obvious what you got to do. You have this green block here, and I'm trying to use my gun to grapple over it, but there's nothing I can destroy. So looks like I'm going to have to destroy this box here. And uh, yeah, I think it's quite obvious what's got to happen here. This game also makes quite a bit of use of the gamepad as well, so. You um, I don't know how well that would translate to YouTube really because um, obviously there's stuff that can't be recorded through that audio and that sort of stuff. What's going on here is you're using the kind of mini Wii U pad to um, follow footprints using the UV scanner to work out and um, basically leads you to clues. Kind of like the Batman Arkham series, I suppose, where you kind of switch to different views to see stuff. Obviously, a bit of a mistake of it. Here comes my Tomb Raider. Aha! A key! The trouble is, I can't find any way of removing this little green arrow, which kind of shows you where to go. Using the key opens another door, which allows access to another switch. Not the team rider stuff really. There's also like um obviously there's melee combat and that sort of stuff as well, but and the cutscenes are are really funny <laughs> at the times. And it knows it's a game, let's put it that way. No. I'll switch to some of that um cutscene here now. I just solved the puzzle to get access to this guy. And I'll leave it here. 
you guys see this bit? Hey, are you blue? Mm. I've had better days, Sonny. I'm Chase. <clears throat> I heard you might know about Rex Fury. Rex Fury? That man owes me. For helping him escape? Why would I do that? Rex was my biggest customer until he disappeared, owing me for a hot tub. You know how difficult it is to smuggle one of them in? Speaking of which... Careful with Haywood's new car, hmm? Uh, sure, Blue! So how did Rex escape? Well, that's the question on everyone's lips. Except no one's allowed in his cell to find out. Not even the police. That's not right. But... We both want to see Rex back in here, so I've got an idea. Get some gear from the cupboard in my cell, then I'll call you with more information on this. That's a croissant. We aren't allowed phones in here. The phone's inside it. Put your number in. Oh! <laughs> there. I hope this plan of yours works, Blue. Uh, are you free, man? No. No, I am not Freeman. His lawyers might be watching. What's the matter, Haywood? You don't like your new car? Car? Uh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Anyway, this is a bit of the, um, the combat from it. Basically, you here we've got to get the janitor on side to get access to his locker room. And I've got to um, lock up these five criminals here. They're quite easy to beat, really. It's a little bit destructible scenery, which is nice. It's got a kind of 60s Batman feel to it, I think. If only had the boom and kapow and that sort of stuff. Good work! Work. So, is there any way I can help you, officer? Yeah. I need to check a prisoner's cell for something. He's called Blue? <laughs> Blue? He's been here almost as long as me. Always sees I get some of that cake his mom bakes him. It kind of tastes funny. There you go. I'm off for a nap. Need to stay alert. That's why I have at least four a day. I am really regretting my life choices about now. Yes, sir, boy. Get him on side. It's basically unlock the costume for me. And these different costumes unlock different abilities. So now I'm switched to being a robber and try and break into the prison. If that makes sense. Hmm. I'm guessing there's also different yeah. points that you can do this around the city as well. Like when I first got on the motorbike earlier on, there was a um, locked what? letterbox. Which I guess you can break into. But it's kind of random comments at the minute. There's also an audio playing through the gamepad as well. It's some, a guy talking to you over the microphone, so. You kind of only get half the conversation on here, which is a shame. I'm gonna get you back for this, policeman. Yeah. Next game time. This one, Sonic Lost Worlds. And um, mixed review is this. I like it because it was basically as, as the closest it got to the old school Sonic in quite a while. I feel it's heavily inspired by Mario Galaxy, though. You can tell that just by the rotating levels, but um. I've kind of tried to make it a bit more trouble by having three different speeds. You can have like a walk, a sprint, or an outright spin dash thing. And um, a bit of shame about the lockdown, but it's, it's quite good fun. But the boss, the bosses are atrocious. Really, they are. I'm, I'm not even going to put them on here because they're that, they're that bad. But it's definitely got a Sonic CD feel to it, some of the stuff. Especially the artwork on this level. If you watch, if you send the entry to Sonic CD, you'll know exactly what I mean. So on the sale you think I do like this. And then um, like Sonic Colors, it's got a mixture of um, 3D and 2D gameplay. As well as using the the um, colour things from Sonic Colors, I can't remember what they're called now. But they basically give you different abilities. So I'll just stick with some more gameplay in a minute. So you've got the speed and that sort of stuff. This is one of the Color things now. Basically, you want this one to use a touch screen on your gamepad to aim at the blue diamonds and then that will rocket you forward. 
with a points bonus, I assume. You'll see uh, the other thing about these levels, like the original games, that there's like two or three different ways for it to complete the level, depending on which way around you go. Uh, so, he was a little bit more gameplay here. Three different game styles and that sort of stuff. Maybe a little bit of 2D. So I feel this is probably the weaker of the two, which is a bit strange being a Sonic game, because normally the 2D is better than the 3D, but... Yeah, yeah it might just be this level. This, this level here is a bit more of a, a puzzly sort of thing. It's kind of Super Monkey Ball, like in the... Well, balls rolling around and that sort of stuff, I guess. Yes. Kind of go around these different areas, there's little hidden areas down below you can get access to and that sort of stuff. Like this bit here. Well, I may do a bit of this gameplay, but um, I was kind of planning on doing all the Sonics at some point. I was doing Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3 and that was the next, and then kind of work through them in order. But, um, yeah, some will, some will not like Sonic 2006, and I don't, I don't want to do that. All the little references in this level to the old enemies is brilliant, I think. I kind of got that old school Sonic feel to it. I guess I'd say Sonic Generation is still probably the better uh, modern Sonic game, but this one is good then. Yeah, I like this bit of gameplay in here because it kind of shows the different speeds that you can go at. Um, I this kind of running speed here. Got a walking speed and a spin dash. And a lot of enemies too. You can kind of line the enemies up and kick them into each other as well, which is quite fun to do. Also, um, there's different routes you can go as well, like this way you can get up through the waterfall or you can get carry on the other way. Faint nice big point on the waterfall. Yeah, Mr. Red Red Star by going into place, obviously going by going a different way, you can grab all different stars and that sort of stuff. So, replayability and that sort of stuff is obviously quite a popular thing in here. Right, I think that's pretty much enough for. Sonic Lost Worlds, I think we shall go on to the next game now. And it will be Rayman. Yeah, this is a, a the latest Rayman game. Um, what's that called? Rayman Legends, that's the one, Rayman Legends. I don't know why I forgot that. <laughs> Sorry, it's a very good game, it's, uh, a lot of reviewers say it's basically your best non Mario platform we ever made, and well, I'm a Sonic guy, so I'm not going to say <laughs> I agree entirely with that. But um, Sonic 3 and Knuckles is still the best ever, in my opinion. But um, that's just my opinion. Isn't it? Um, in modern times, definitely though, this is a very fun game. Unlimited lives, but it's still a tricky game. Lots of hidden areas, like um, you got to collect all these little guys here. 
very fun. Great music. Um, yeah. A lot of content in the game as well, because I actually gave away about a third of the original game as Rayman Origins as well, which is bonus levels for unlocking this, which is quite nice. Heavily delayed though. It's basically we're launched exclusive but obviously end up being on every platform under the sun really. That wasn't the fail by the way, it was intentional jump because it was what's checked wasn't the secret area. Honest. There are a lot of them. Oh, that was a fail though. And that was a win. Do you ever see a secret area down there? Yes, I do. Rayman there showing us how it's done. He said, You dance, Rayman, you dance. And this one, Zombie You, the big exclusive launch title. Which I haven't really played enough of. I don't really have But I'm going to leave this one uncut. Because I've obviously got highlights, not really highlights, but I've had sections of the gameplay. This one I want to leave whole. So you get better feel. Basically, random survivors. It's permadeath, so once this character dies, that's it, they're permanently dead, and you just respawn as a new character. Um, you can upgrade your characters, and um, also make them stronger, that sort of stuff. But any upgrades you do to them, that's it, once they die, it doesn't carry over, so it's kind of the risk reward sort of gameplay, which is quite nice. Um, I'll go for an inventory there, but you can see it because it's all done on the gamepad. And it's all done in real time as well because the game doesn't pause. So you have to keep an eye on the screen, make sure you're not getting attacked because they can basically it seems like they can attack from anywhere anytime, so you're gonna have to be careful. This isn't a safe house at the minute with these sewers being fast travel, so once you get to a certain point you can unlock different areas. And then um, fast travel quick quickly there and back. Obviously okay, safe houses are kind of safe. You can board up, get wooden planks and board places up and that sort of stuff to survive because um, if your zombie hordes come and attack you. And, um, um, <laughs> it's actually really creepy as well. The proper survival horror stuff. Especially when you haven't played it for as long as I have because I haven't got a clue what most of the buttons do. <laughs> I honestly can't remember. I can't bother looking in the book. So I'm just going to wing it. Um, there's a few touchscreen related things as well. 
campaign on the next online, which I've not sure was. Basically, it's kind of like I suppose the best way you can describe this game is a cross between Dark Souls and DayZ. That's pretty much well, that is what it is, really. A single player DayZ with the pattern of death of Dark Souls, where once you die, that's it, you lose everything. But um, in this game, that new character, if you get to the same point that you died, rather than like Dark, Dark Souls, you just pick up where you left off if you can retrieve everything. Your previous um, persona, that's what you call them, they are now a zombie, and if you kill that zombie, then you get all the gear they were carrying, but obviously not all the abilities that they had. So that's a, that's a good thing to do. And if you can't, if you get killed by that zombie, or die before you get there, I'm not sure, but I think their zombie gets carried over, that zombie gets carried over to another someone else's game, so they got a chance to get your gear. I think that's how it works. I'm not sure, but I've got a feeling zombies kind of spawn randomly as well. I, I might be wrong on that. So, I'm kind of. I know I'm travelling. I've got to head to Buckingham Palace, and um, I'm just taking these corners really slow here because um, I know I've been this way before and I died. So I, obviously, uh, you see me log in as this new character, and it's been so long since I've played this, I can't really remember how far I got. I know I travelled through some sort of container area, which is obviously this bit here, and. I've got a feeling that there was multiple routes but I might be wrong on that, I might have just got lost in the maze like area I probably have actually um, yeah you got a you got a flashlight but it's got limited um, battery power you have to you know, turn off and recharge it and, um, the zombies react to light and sand and stuff as well, so you've got to be really careful because they, they are quite easily capable of taking you down fairly quick. And then um, they take a lot of hits to kill as well. And I'm just going to try and work out where I'm going. Try and remember what's going on then. If you use your gamepad, you can kind of scan the area. Obviously, you can't see that here, but what I'm seeing here at the minute on the game screen is um, ways to go and that sort of stuff lit up in areas of interest. There's also a radar on your map as well, so you can tap that and it'll send out little blips so you can kind of work out where the zombies are. Ah, that's the quick turn button. But the controls are quite sluggish as well, but I think that's kind of intentional, to be honest. That kind of adds to your helplessness because if it was a Twitch Call of Duty style shooter, then a lot of the fear would have been taken out of it. But you know, having a slow, sluggish characters kind of feel more like a, a human. You no know, training, you just kind of you're there, you're stuck in a situation. Aha! I think that was my previous character there. You've got a score, so yeah, basically you get scores on how long you last for. So what I'm going to try and do is how much ammo have we got? Not a lot. Um, obviously that sand's going to be an issue. Let's see if there's anything else or anything I can use. Basically, what I try and sneak up on this guy, take him out as quick as I can, get my old gear back because I had quite a bit of good stuff on that. Ah, crap! There's more zombies there. Um, Obviously my character is going to be probably the toughest of these guys. I want to try and draw them out one at a time if I can. There we go, that's one here. I'm hoping he might get stuck behind this wall or something. Um, because, oh that's something else as well. Because they, the zombies change depending on what area of London you're in. I was here at some Buckingham Palace so there's a lot of soldiers and security here. So all the zombies will be have extra armour on so it'll be that little bit harder to kill. You can't headshot anything unless you knock their head, set, head gear off first. You can see it's quite a real thing. I've actually knocked half his skull away and they're still coming to it. These guys are tough. They lost a bit of health already. Come on, buttons again. I don't know you push them back with that. Oh, we lost almost half health already. This isn't going to go well at all. Oh no, I think I'm going to die. I'm going to have to resort to this. I 
go and draw the other one. Oh, he's lost his head. Uh, come on, let's go over one. On. And I'm out of ammo. Shit. Get back. Get back. That's one on one now, so I'm hoping, unless another guy coming from behind me I didn't know about. I mean, just can I push this guy back a bit? Finish him. Wow, well, that was close. Well, I didn't, honestly didn't think I'd do that. So yeah, you can see what I'm picking up here. And, and planks, the board, windows up, health packs, that sort of stuff. Flares, you can use flares to throw as a distraction. More ammo for the handgun if you've handy. And you also get um, limited um, inventory space as well, so you have to be really selective what you take and what you don't take. Um, more survival sort of thing. I just, um, I've got this rifle here off at uh, my last guy, so I feel a little bit more safe now, but obviously not a lot. I've got to wait a way to go though, because I'm not entirely sure. I also lost my bearings a bit, because I see some way to loot. I was fighting that other zombie, but I don't know where it's going. Let's just kick these guys. Sometimes zombies drop, drop stuff as well. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, the game doesn't pause, so the whole time I'm looting these bodies and my old body, if there is a zombie coming to attack you, that, that'd be it. And you probably have them, so you got to be really careful. Switch between two screens. Obviously, while you're looking on your gamepad, you can't actually see the TV, so you got kick glass up. I didn't like the sound of that. Oh shit, there's one there. Where does he come from? Is that our coin going to come to life That's it, do it for the coin. National anthem, come on. Send us a loop. Okay, it's, it's probably atmospheric, this game. Graphically, it's not brilliant, but. Dirty, gritty feel to it actually works quite well, I think. Well, I've got a bit of stuff in this section, I'm going to try and um, rearrange the inventory for the side down and get everything that I want. Which is unfortunate, but yeah, that's the game really. Again, there's stuff playing through the uh, wheel rate which I can't actually record, so um, whether that would detract from experience or not, I don't really know. And so the game plays and um, the audio that sort of stuff. That locked it until that's the that was my objective, so that's that's something good. So I've basically got to pick a lock for access to sewers, which obviously I'm guessing is a shortcut to this area. Or to the next area which I need to get to, which is obviously inside the palace. Yes. I don't know what, where that sewer hatch is. I've got some more ammo. It's always a good thing. A grenade. For emergency. Um, I'm going to relay this because I haven't got a clue what's going to be outside this door. I'm going to put the flashlight on and. Oh! I think this is actually a safe house, which is a good thing. The sleep bag here, so I should be able to uh, work bench. So, I'll just uh, show you that. Oh, well, he appears on the screen on my gamepad. But um, basically, on upgrade all the different types of weapons, um, I collect and stuff to do the upgrades. But no, I'm not going to do that just yet because I don't know whether what I risk using valuable stuff if I'm going to lose it. But if I don't, it's going to make the game harder. Says, so yeah. A bit more cheerful now. Sonic Sega All Stars Race and Transform. This game is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Absolute fan service to any anybody who grew up with a Sega Mega Drive or Saturn. 
would love this game, I tell you. Technically, as a Mario Kart style game, um, I'm going to say Crash Team Racing on the PS1 is probably a better racer, but yeah, as if you like Sonic, if you like Sega, classic Sega games, you're going to love this, honestly. I mean, just listen to the music in the background, you got a remix of the old, one of the old Sonic CD intros, this is a Sonic inspired one, you've also got loads of references, you've got um, Scholars of Arcadia levels, Pandragoon levels, um, Golden Axe characters from Crazy Taxi, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, oh I just love playing this game, I really don't play this enough. Right here, Fans Dragoon, Jesset Radio, Afterburner. You know, this Samba de Amigo. This is this is fast service, really. It really is. Have another look. See what else in the next area. World Jet Set. I think that's Jet Set anyway. Super Monkey Ball. Let's go with Arcadia. Yes, that's a pretty good, pretty good map, actually. But this one. You can't go wrong with this one. I mean, Sonic music in the loading screens and remix of the original um, background music as well. Sky Century Zone from Sonic and Knuckles, or Sonic Brain Knuckles, the proper version. And that's the good thing about the transformed in this in this game. Um, Basically, each character's craft can transform between three different forms, road, sea and air. So you've got a bit of cart and a bit of um, kind of fly and a bit of boat racing in there as well. And the weapons work quite well over all three. And um, as the levels go on, I suppose you can borrow the phrase of a revolution from Battlefield here, where the um, map breaks up and different things. So one minute you're on the road, then you could be racing in the water. Are you up in the air? And yeah. That's just classic Mario Kart. Well, Kart and fun. Power up and sort of stuff. Yeah, I'm quite enthusiastic about this game again. Um, yeah, what I'll do in a minute is I'll show you the two different styles of gameplay that you can have in the same area over the two different maps. As I finish this bit here. Back to a bit of the line. Oh, see it. We were on the, on the grain, then we're at, up in the air as well, then come back up to the same area as well. Back to the here. As you can tell us in the Sonic level, a bit of um, boat racing going on, so I'd throw this in here to show you and transform into, into grand racing. It all flows pretty seamlessly. This one here is a bit of um, Skies of Arcadia I believe. And all recognisable music. Switching over to flying. So I was attracted of you and widen so you get more of a reliance on um, driving ability with this rather than um, weapons because a lot of them you have to, unless you're really good at aiming manually, you can't really rely on. And back to driving it. And there, a bit of the water. These last two clips here, um, Pan 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 Dragoon, um, Circa. And over the two different um, stars, over the two different areas. And um, basically, back to you um, racing on 
by seeing these good tricks to get boost and that sort of stuff. And then if we do the same area on the third lap, that's all um, James there, you actually need blind as part. So if you're really good at one thing, you might not be as good at another. So everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. People think they're quite well there. Are these things hanging down there from the last lap? That 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 this time. Yeah. So yeah, all good stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um. Yeah, if there's anything you like to look up that you want me to have a go at, then I probably will try. These are most of the games I've got a um, Tekken as well, but I'm not very good at that. I've also got the Mario Kart, not sorry, Mario 3D World as well, and the New Super Mario Bros. U, but um, I know Nintendo have a bit of an issue with their copyright and that sort of stuff when you're playing their first party game, so I'd rather avoid doing them if I can. But all the rest of the stuff I've just shown you, I'd uh, be quite happy to. There we go, right, so yeah, I'll probably do some off my own back, and if you've got anything you'd like to see, then I might be able to do that as well. So, until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.